Welcome back to the second episode in this fascinating new series, Towards a Solar Civilization, the teaching of Ombra Mikhail Ivanhoff. Hi, I am your host, Naika. Today's topic is nutrition from a spiritual perspective. In other words, it's all about the importance of conscious eating to nourish all our physical and subtle bodies. No matter what type of diet you're on, the most important thing is to know how to eat mindfully. The inner state in which we absorb food is reflected on us. Alex will help you discover how to draw subtle energies from nutrition that will allow you to accomplish all of your future activities more fully, deeply, and healthfully. The science of the initiates teaches us that food is prepared in the divine laboratories with incredible wisdom that contains magical elements capable of preserving or restoring physical, psychological, and even psychic health. By using human thought effectively, we are capable of drawing subtle luminous particles from food which take part in the constitution of our entire being. Indeed, Ombra Mikhail Ivanhoff's Rani Yoga, or the Yoga of Nutrition, emphasizes mindful eating as one of the fundamental spiritual practices. It teaches that the way we eat affects our physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. In this second episode, Alex will explore the role of nutrition as a catalyst for personal transformation, using music to prepare the mind before eating, the significance of eating in silence, how we change our destiny through the yoga of nutrition, and so much more. Today, I am pleased to welcome Alex Crenshaw. Alex is the founder of the Zen Institute in Mount Shasta, California. He changed from being a corporate accountant to a Zen Buddhist practitioner. With a unique journey of encompassing corporate roles, Zen Buddhism training, an accounting degree, and an MBA, Alex dedicates himself to societal betterment. He regularly contributes to both radio and television and focuses on human potential, mindfulness, and societal issues. Inspired by the teaching of Master Omra Mikhail Ivanhoff, Alex is committed to promoting the teaching through many different channels. I'm glad that you're here today. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, Naika, for the introduction. It is a great pleasure to be here introducing these powerful teachings of the Yoga of Nutrition based on the teachings of Master Ombran Mikhail Ivanhoff. In this program, we will learn how to use the mind to transform our lives through eating, how this basic practice can have far-reaching effects in our lives and in the life of others, how we can change our destiny for the better using this amazing practice three times a day. What I love from Master Ombra, he mentioned that many people want to do a spiritual practice and they think that they need to go to a mountain, to a monastery, but he teaches us that we can do a very high and advanced spiritual practice by the way we eat, and most importantly, how we use our minds. This amazing instrument, this divine instrument, and through the teachings of Master Ombran, we can learn how to use our mind properly to its highest capacity. And we can do that three times a day with this amazing practice. So in part one, we will learn the basics of the yoga of nutrition, how to prepare the mind, to eat, the importance of what we eat, the way we eat, the quality of our thoughts, how to prepare our mind. And in part two of this program, we will explore the more esoteric parts of these teachings, uh, the invisible aspects, of, or as the quantum field teaches now, that of all the reality in the universe, 1% is, is energy, is matter, and 99% is energy. So we will combine both in the yoga of nutrition, how to combine matter and energy to improve our lives and the lives of others. Thank you for listening. Welcome to this program, the yoga of nutrition, running yoga, the alchemical and magical meaning of nutrition. This is episode two of this series 
towards a solar civilization. In this program, we will explore this profound practice, the yoga of nutrition, from Master Omran Michael I Ivanhoe. Master Omran placed a very important emphasis on the way we eat and how we eat as a way to transform our lives. Uh, he mentions that we uh, normally think that we need to go to an ashram or to live in a monastery or to abandon society to do a uh, high spiritual practice, but he teaches us that we can do that every day in our homes by the way we eat. And we can do a very advanced spiritual practice if we know how to eat properly. All the quotes in this program are based on the book Rani Yoga. That is, as you know, Master Omram, he never wrote any book. He gave 5,000 lectures and all of them were recorded. And this book of Rani Yoga was based on some of the lectures that were uh, related to nutrition. And this is a very profound practice that it can become a catalyst for transformation in your life and to change your destiny. It is uh, a very old and Master Ombran simplified the practice and we will understand why all these ancient traditions eat in silence. What is the meaning of eating in silence? I myself, I live in a Zen center for seven years and uh, part of the training was to do a lot of uh, uh, silence, meditation in silence and including eating. But I never understood the far reaching uh, effects of eating in silence until I understood um, the composition of a human body, especially with the teaching of the, of the system of the six bodies that is key for the initiatic school of Master Omrad Michael Ivanhoe that we will explore soon. Only initiates who have reflected for a long time on the highly important question of nutrition know the right way to look at it. So initiates began to, to observe how uh, the way you eat and what you eat influences not only your physical body, but your psyche and how you can change your psychology by the way you eat. You can change your destiny, not only your own destiny, but the destiny of a whole society by the way society eats. And you, you can determine the evolution of a human being by the way this person eats. Now, to have a clear understanding of the consequences of this practice, we need to understand the system of the six bodies, which is one of the foundational teachings of Master Omran. And as we can see here, we have six bodies. And I want you to remember the number six because we will cover that in part two of this program. How important is the number six in spiritual numerology? And as we can see on this diagram, we have six bodies and they are divided in the higher self and the lower self. And if you see in the middle, where are the, uh, the vesica shape, we have the signs of the zodiac because every, every body, it is related to a sign of the zodiac. And Master Omran wrote a book about the importance of the zodiac for a human being. Now, the lower self, is, it is related to the personality. And the lower self is divided in the mental body, which relates to the intellect, the astral body, which is related to the heart, and the physical body, which it is related to the will. The higher self, which is related to individuality, has three bodies. We have the causal body, which is related to the reason. We have the buddhic body, which it is related to the soul, and we have the ethnic body, which is related to the spirit. Now, of these six bodies, only one 
is visible to the physical eyes, obviously is a physical body. The other six bodies are not visible to the normal eyes. In modern terms, this is what the quantum field says that of this reality, only 1% is physical and the 99% is energy. So the other five bodies are what comprise the 99%. Now, keep in mind that these six bodies are functionally constantly, 24 seven, even while you're sleeping. And an initiate wants to be aware of these six bodies constantly, because if you are not aware of that, they influence you and the six bodies are also influenced by the, by the environment that is around you. Other people, nature is affecting these six bodies. That is the reason an initiate plays a, a strong attention on their environment because it affects the, the six bodies, especially within the lower self, we have the astral body and the astral body, as you know, it is related to the emotions and the feelings. And we become aware of that at night. Every night when we go to sleep, we go to the astral realm and we experience, and we experience all the emotions that affect human beings. So an, an initiate plays a very strong uh, emphasis on the astral body and how to train. So that is the reason we need to have a clear understanding of this of the six and of the six bodies because when we eat we can influence these six bodies at the same time that is the reason it is very important to prepare the mind and to eat in silence the other part here also here we can see that the other five bodies are related to the to the etheric body the invisible one or what is called the etheric double. Now it has been confirmed that many diseases start on the etheric body and the etheric body is related to the astral body, which is affected by the emotion. So you have an emotion that is negative that affects the etheric body and then it affects the physical body. It has been confirmed, which initiates new for a long time, that many diseases start in the etheric body and they manifest in the physical body. That is the reason if you see a Chinese doctor or an Ayurvedic doctor, they look at the energy body before they treat the physical body because they know that we are more than what the physical eyes can see. So with this knowledge now you will get the most of this yoga of nutrition practice because otherwise you will get bored, you will not understand, well, what is the benefit? But now that you can see that we are more than what the physical eyes can see, you can realize how important is this practice to transform our lives and change our destiny. Initiates gave a place to nutritional research in their work. They found that food prepared in the divine laboratories with incredible wisdom contains magical elements capable of preserving or restoring physical and psychic health and giving us the greatest revelations. We can see here Master Omran when he was younger, how an initiate gets close to nature because as he teaches us in many of his lectures, he shared that nature contains many secrets. So the initiate gets close to nature and one of the best way to do it is through what we eat, harvesting, planting seeds of vegetable fruits. We get in touch with our hands and we feel the energy of nature. So we can see here how he gave us an, exa gave us an example of planting and harvesting the quality of what we eat. And we can see also in this example, it can give you an idea of always asking yourself, what is the meal that I, I am having in front of me coming from? Who harvested that? Who planted that? What is the energy behind it? When you understand it, 
Nutrition will become for you a source of blessing and wonder because greater significance will be attached to it. We can see here, uh, this is in Switzerland. Uh, there are three main schools in the world. Uh, in France, at the Bonfin, in Switzerland, Videlinata, and in Canada. And here in the image, we can see Master Ombran in the background when, he's, when he was teaching. And people were eating in group. That is the importance of the community, of the brotherhood. And people were eating in silence. And in this quote, it's telling us here that Nutrition can, be, can become a source of blessings and wonder. The more significance we give to it, the more benefit we will get. And again, we need to prepare the mind to get the most benefit of it. And it makes a big difference when you eat alone that, you, we, that when you eat in a community. I have done it and the energy is different. Yes, when you eat alone, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's different energy. But when you are in silence with a community, energy is magnified because we have all this intention of the community for the benefit of others. So the quality is different. And Master Ombran, he also plays uh, in all his teachings a very important emphasis on community, on the brotherhood. And this is an example that we can see on these pictures. But we must know in what conditions and by what means we can extract these elements and that the most effective method is thought. Most of this training is how to purify the mind to absorb the most of what we have in front of us. We need to prepare the mind because as we have seen previously, everything is energy and with our thoughts create our reality. So when we are eating, we need to prepare the mind to fine tune this very important and delicate instrument called the mind with capital M to absorb the nutrients, the visible nutrients and the invisible nutrients from what we are eating. And we need to prepare the mind. That is the reason that we will see in part two, the importance of music, how to balance the hemispheres of the brain, the left and right hemispheres. How, and then we eat in silence. We're not talking to others, either verbally or mentally, because if you are eating in silence, but you are having a mental discussion with the neighbor or with your partner, well, that doesn't help because you are distracted. So we need to prepare the mind. Thousands of people make themselves ill without knowing that their ills stem from the way they feed themselves. Years ago, I read on a magazine that a psychiatrist received a patient and this patient went, went to see the, the psychiatrist because he was suffering from anxiety, from depression, from anger. And by his surprise, the psychiatrist, instead of asking him about his mind, his emotion, he asked him, tell me what you eat. And the person described, well, I eat all these uh, burgers, french fries, fast food. And the psychiatrist asked him, I want you to uh, stop eating all that. And I want you to eat more organic, more whole, more close to nature. And the person did that. And he noticed that all his anxiety, all his depression, his anger was reduced, began to disappear by what he was eating. So we can see an example here that what we eat affects not only our bodies, but our minds, because they are not separate. An example of that in this image, for example, we can see an expensive car. And as we all know, to run a car, we need two things. We need gasoline and oil. Without gasoline, we can, we can go nowhere. And we can compare gasoline to what we eat. We eat to do more. But we humans, with all 
uh, hundreds of years, we have reversed this practice. Sometimes we eat and we fall asleep. No, you eat because you want to do more. And the quality of, your, of what you eat and the state of mind while you are eating makes a big difference to have the better performance. And the oil represents the blood, the quality of the blood. We know that the better the oil, the better the performance of the car. Well, it is the same. Now, if we compare this to the human body, here in this image, what we eat becomes the blood, which is the oil in a car. So we, you can have uh, the best nutrition, but if the quality of your mind is not ready to absorb that, that, that nutrition, the quality of your, blood, of your blood will be affected. So, and as we can see here, the blood goes around the whole body and one of the functions is to clean the body, gather toxins and clean the body again. So this is a process So what we eat and the way we eat makes a very important difference on the quality of our life, not only physically, but mentally. And why mentally? Because as we can see on this image, what we eat affects the solar plexus. And Master Ombrans in his teachings place a very important emphasis on the solar plexus, which also controls the vagus nerve. And as you know, the vagus nerve controls the emotions of the human body, which are affected by what you eat and the way you eat. The highest white magic initiates set about putting themselves in the best conditions to receive the elements prepared in nature's laboratories. Hi, I want to give you some suggestions about eating uh, using the body. For example, always try to eat with the back straight because uh, the position of the body tells you where's the mind. Uh, if you see people that are, have a lot of preoccupation, that are encroaching like this, or they're thinking a lot, it helps to have the back straight because you take oxygen while you breathe, while you're eating, and you nourish the body along with what you are uh, consuming. Uh, so that's important also. This is a suggestion. I also want to mention that you need to be flexible. You have family and... Uh, and you need to talk to them. Well, do not eat in silence, especially if you have children. In ancient times, the most important place in a house was the kitchen, because in the kitchen, uh, the family were getting, were getting together, and it was the time to bond, to, to know e each other. And now, in, in modern times, people are together in a table, but you see them with the cell phones, so they are not eating in silence. So it's very different. We live in, in a very different time. So one of the goals of this practice is to center yourself, but at the same time is to make the importance of family values. Um, one of the problems that we have in society now is uh, the family values are disappearing. So it's important to bring them back. And uh, the yoga of nutrition gives us this gift of being with the family and and you need to balance. Sometimes if you cannot eat in silence, you can be creative. Even if you are drinking something, you can make that your own practice, drinking that in silence. Uh, sometimes in nutrition, we think it needs to be a solid, uh, a solid meal, but can be a juice, can be tea. A very simple, be, be creative and adapt this practice to what you are drinking, to what you are eating. But again, if you have children and it's the time to know them, uh, eating in silence, uh, maybe you need to, to adapt the practice and do it in, in another time. That's important also. Also try whenever you can to eat close to nature. It makes a big difference. We normally, we work in offices or we're close to the computer. Uh, eating in silence in front of the computer can be very distracting and can be tempting even if, you're in, if you are eating in silence. So try to go outside if you can, if the weather permits. Uh, also try to research uh, where the food that you are eating is coming from. 
uh, any vegetables, any produce, uh, be, because remember, everything is energy. Energy, frequency, and vibration. Uh, with this initiatic training, you need to start to uh, transform the way you see the world. And uh, any energy gets, gets absorbed in, in physical uh, items, especially while, while, while we're eating. As, uh, as I mentioned, the energies, uh, uh, the fruits and the vegetables have the energy of the stars, the sun, and the planets. Uh, I was watching a documentary, uh, The Secret Life of Plants, and a scientist went to the desert to test uh, how plants behave around nature, and he attached to the plants very sophisticated instruments, and he found out that the plant was following the path of the stars. So it was doing this, it was moving, and it was following the stars. It was amazing for him. So imagine that is the energy, energy that we want. As you can see now with this, uh, that one of the goals is to fine tune the mind to receive this energy that is in, in what we are eating. Based on this, as you can imagine, the less process is is what you eat, the better for your health. The more pure, the better. It's the same. So find out that what it what it's that you are eating, what it's coming from. And, and it doesn't matter. Also remember that everything is matter and everything is energy. You can change it. And that's the purpose of your thoughts. You can embed any energy. Bless what you eat. Some people use the hands. Some people do it mentally. If you're in public, you do it mentally. So these are just some, some guidelines that, that, that can help you to deepen in this practice of the yoga of nutrition. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Now here's to a quick break. Welcome back. I'm glad that you're still here. Back to you, Alex. I can't wait to hear the rest of your talk. Thank you, Naika, for the introduction. It's very glad to be back for this part two of the Yoga of Nutrition. And we will explore now the more esoteric pra practice of the Yoga of Nutrition. We're going to go deeper and to see the effects on the subtle bodies of the Yoga of Nutrition, the way we eat. Chewing is for the physical body. For the etheric body, we must add respiration. Air kindles flame. You breathe on fire to bring it to life. Similarly, when you breathe while eating, this intensifies combustion. Okay, here we can see that we have the etheric body. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, that we have what is called the etheric body, which is not visible to the eyes. But what connects the etheric body is breathing. So the way we, we activate it or we nourish it is through breathing. So that is important while we're eating to pause and to inhale deeply. That creates combustion. And then that combination that we're chewing, that is the fire plus the air, creates com uh, combustion and there is very assimilation. Plus, in addition, we activate the etheric double. Because as I mentioned also at the beginning, most of the problems, physical problems, began begin in the etheric double. Doesn't start on the physical body. That is the secondary symptom. The symptoms start on the etheric body, affected by the astral body, the emotions. For example, in Chinese medicine, every organ is connected to an emotion. For example, the liver. The, the negative emotion is anger. You have a lot of anger as an emotion that affects the astral body, then it affects the etheric body, and then it manifests on the physical body. Digestion is just combustion, just as breathing and thinking are. Only the degree of heat supplied and the purity of the matter differs from one process to another. So we have different process here. As 
I mentioned at the beginning, everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. So every, every thought is energy. Breathing is energy. So we want to harmonize both at the same time. And inhaling deeply is very important. So notice when you eat, how you inhale, and also it's important the body, try always to keep the back straight. So that is gonna help you to bring the air all, all the way to the navel, to the stomach, all the way down. Most Westerners only stop at the chest. And that's, the, and that's one, one reason we have problems. We need to take all the way down our inhalation to nourish the lower part of the body. That's the problem. They do not have a lot of oxygen. So we want to do that, especially when we eat. We need to add the combustion, inhaling deeply. When you eat, you must stop from time to time and breathe deeply so that this combustion allows the etheric body to draw several particles from the food. As we saw that we have the six bodies, but also fruits, vegetables, they, all have, they also have the, the other bodies, the subtle bodies. Then you want to extract those subtle bodies from the fruit, from, from the vegetables. And the way to do it is through breathing. That's the key of this practice. So for this reason, we need to eat in silence. If you are talking, if you are thinking, if you are thinking about negative things, what well, you are affecting that, because remember, thinking is energy. So now you can see how important it is to eat in silence. In order to feel the etheric body, you must breathe deeply. So the etheric body carries vitality, memory, and sensitivity. You benefit when it develops properly. Remember again, this is key to have always clear. Your physical body is a reflection of the etheric body. Whenever you eat properly, you are nourishing the etheric body, and at the same time, you are nourishing the physical body. So when it develops pr properly. So we first nourish the etheric body, and then we nourish the physical body. So we can see here again the importance of this process and its profound effects in every aspect. And then the etheric body is going to affect the other bodies. But it is, not, it is not enough to have fed the physical and etheric bodies. We must also feed the astral body. Going back to the system of the six bodies. If you are eating in silence, but you are thinking on negative things or have negative emotions, you are affecting the astral body negatively. By the contrary, if you are eating grateful of what you are eating, if you are close to nature, you feel happy and you're affecting the astral body. So as we can see here, it's not only eating in silence, but it is the state of mind while you are eating in silence. Given that the astral body is nourished with feelings and emotions, which are made of finer and subtle manner than the etheric pa particles. So this is a process of refinement of the personality. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if you want to know the stage of evolution of a human being, Watch the way they eat. Initiates place a lot of attention on nourishment because we, are, we have other dimensions that, are, that we're affecting while, while we're eating. As they pause a few moments to send love to the food, initiates prepare their astral body to extract particles from the food, even more precious than the etheric particles. This is a vast universe. And we can access that, especially at, at any time, but especially while we're eating, because we're ingesting energy that first was subtle, because remember, whatever you are eating, fruits or vegetables, they, they were first a seed. And that seed grew to become a fruit or vegetable 
through the energy of the sun, the air, and nature. So imagine the power that, that you're absorbing. So the initiate is what it is absorbing. All that energy that we cannot see with the eyes. To calm yourself down, you take medicines, but you will continue to feel stress as long as no one has taught you how to eat and you are ignorant of the fact that you can improve the state of your nervous system during mealtimes. This is a very important principle. As we can see here on the image, people are used to take pills to calm themselves down. But really, what, by eating, you can nourish your nervous system that we saw previously. It's controlled by the vagus nerve and the solar plexus. So when, when we eat properly with the proper state of mind, when we prepare the body and the mind, we can adjust the nervous systems and bring that back to balance. Instead of, of taking medicines that are artificial and that have secondary effects that's, that most of the time they are not beneficial for the human body and the mind. So we can see here the benefits of eating properly. I, I want you to watch here the work of the, of the, of the, of the Dr. Masaru Emoto. Here he did a lot of research of the impact of thoughts on water. And as we can see here on this image, there is a Tokyo stop water before and after 500 people send their energies of love remotely from different places in Japan. So the first image on the left, that is the water polluted in Tokyo. And the second image of the six star of the crystal, that the, the same water after people send their loving thoughts to the water. So here we can see several principles that are very important. Number one, that we can change reality. Remember, 1% is physical matter and the 99% is energy. So energy is malleable. And we can change matter with our thoughts. And this is an example. Now, I want you to put an, an attention also that in this image, all the crystal has something in common. They have six sides, regardless of the shape. One of them represents music, other saying thank you, love. But all of them, when there's harmony and balance, show a six-sided crystal. Remember how many subtle bodies we have? We have six, 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 six bodies, including the physical body. So this is very ancient, and this is what initiates tune in to the six and of the six bodies, and they try to reach this harmony 24-7. As you can see, this is now based on science, but initiates knew that from a long time ago. So you can see how important is your state of mind. I remember once that I was in a restaurant with a friend and the, the waiter came and said, you know, I am having a very bad day. And my friend told me, do you want to eat here? I said, no, and we left because the attitude of the waiter was impacting the food that he was serving. Now we can see the proof of this. This is not just theory. This is a fact. We affect our environment with our thoughts, especially what we eat. That is the reason the process starts while, while you are preparing your meals. When you are cooking, what is the state of mind that, that you have while cooking? because you are passing that state of mind to where you are eating. It is this ability to access different realms that makes human superior beings. This is from the book, Alchemy, Astrology, Magic, Kabbalah. So we human beings have this great gift. We can access different realms with our mind. And that's the most important part. I was reading again the book of Master Ombran about the yoga of nutrition yesterday, and he was mentioning that 
Sometimes people take a lot of care of the, of the quality of what they are eating. But even though they have the best nutrition, if their minds are polluted, they are not getting most of the benefits from that. By the contrary, they are polluting that with their thoughts. No matter how expensive, how organic, how clean is the food that you are eating, your state of mind is so powerful that you affect that. Eating correctly allows us to save a lot of time and energy. Disciples, knowing they must take time and satisfy divine laws, can receive in a few can, can resolve in a few minutes what would have taken 24 hours or more to resolve, because in clarity and light, problems can be solved clearly and correctly. This is another use of eating properly. How we can solve a very complex problem while well, while eating, if we quiet our minds, the solution will come. Instead of spending energy 24 hours, if we go inside, quiet our minds, our divine mind, the divine law that we, that we align to give us the answer to that problem. And that's when we go from meditation to contemplation while we're eating. So this is a very important uh, principle of this practice that you can solve many complex problems while you're in silence. The solution will come. And again, it's how you use the mind. In order to nourish their mental body, initiates concentrate on the food and even close their eyes to concentrate better. For them, food represents a manifestation of the divinity and they try to study it in all its, in all its aspects. When it comes, where it comes from, what it contains, which qualities correspond to it, which entities have taken care of. Again, as we human beings have another sort of bodies, also in nature, there are other entities that are invisible that take care of the vegetables, the fruits, those what is called nature spirits. So which entities are behind what you are eating? Who harvested what you are eating? The farmers, all that energy, the environment, all that is affecting and the, and the initiate, he tries to extract that energy. And again, it's with the mind. This discipline, there's a lot of purification of the mind to prepare to absorb higher energies. In the new race that is to come, humans will be taught that nutrition is not the simple, ordinary process they tend to dismiss it as, but that behind this daily act of eating, God has hidden the possibility for each one of us to do psychic work of the highest importance. Again, even if you have a busy schedule and you want to do a spiritual practice, you can do it while eating. You can do psychic work of the highest importance. So you do not need to go to a monastery, you, you do not need to go to an ashram, you do not need to abandon uh, your family. You can teach them this. And if you do it, to, and if you do it with your family, all will, will be enriched and nourished in many aspects. So music and nutrition, this is uh, Master Omran plays a strong emphasis on music as a way to reach uh, higher knowledge. And this is uh, one of the schools of music of Master Omram. And we will see why, because when you listen to music, and because again, everything is energy, frequency, and vibration, that music, and based on what we saw with the work of Dr. Of Dr. Masaru Emoto, we can see how music affects the vibration of your body. So music balances the two hemispheres of the brain. So it, it balances you. 
It's important when you do something in life that the two hemispheres of the brain, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, are balanced. And music is a great way to do it. Obviously, not any kind of music. But classical music, baroque music, accomplish that. For example, it has been studied with the with the this classical music Handel's Messiah, based on this book Super Learning. The Delaware Labs in England analyzes the wave forms generated by some music. When the wave forms from the fun, from the final chord of Handel's Messiah were charted and overlaid. They form a perfect five on pointed star. And in this quote from Master Ombrand, the five pointed star is the most important symbol for the initiate. So, as we can see here, music is mathematics. Everything in the universe is geometry and mathematics. While, we are, while you are eating, if you analyze that with a microscope, you will realize that. So you use music to prepare your mind to absorb the energies. Especially there is classical music that helps you to do that. Many musicians were initiated and they knew the science. So they embedded in the music very important principles for transformation. So let's explore the process to eat in. First, prepare the mind by listening to music, and then you prepare the mind, and then stop the music and do it in silence. And remember to chew, to breathe deeply, and then once you finish, relax, and it's optional, you can close with music. So this is the basic process. And also remember the physical body, I suggest to have the spine straight, ideally, not bend, bend over because you are blocking the, the oxygen. Remember to chew and to pause and to inhale deeply. So you activate the process of combustion and you activate the etheric body and you nourish also the etheric body and also at the same time, the astral body. I like to close with this quote. Once you have been introduced to the true philosophy that has guided all the noble beings of humanity, you must do your, your utmost to study and apply it. The situation constantly improves for those who excel themselves. Thank you for listening to this uh, talk, for watching it, and I hope that you learn a lot about nutrition, and I look forward to seeing you in the next program. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. This was a fascinating presentation. I've learned that it's not all about what we eat or how much we eat. Far more important is our attitude towards nutrition. It's quite incredible to think that the act of eating is of mystical importance. I really enjoyed learning how eating is also comparable to the Last Supper. What is really interesting as well is how we think about food and how it shows a lot about our connection between us and nature. Nature gives us food. And if we, we are really in tune with nature, we can use this food to help every part of us grow and flourish. If you are interested in learning more about the yoga of nutrition, you may learn more in Ombra Mikhail Ivanhoff's books about nutrition, particularly the complete works number 18, Rani Yoga. If you've enjoyed the second episode, stay tuned for our next episode in two weeks. In episode three, some key points will be shared about the transformation of oneself. You will learn about how working of the sun and light can ignite your sacred fire and allow you to increase your inner light. In episode four, we will hear from two experts from Brazil about how women, and especially pregnant women, hold the key to bringing in higher souls into our world.
Episode five will be with guest presenters who will share their experiences with collectivity's power and benefits. They will also describe what the brotherhood is. And finally, at the end of our first series of episodes, Anatole will interview in episode six, a range of people from Africa, Asia, North and South America and Oceania and how they experience the teaching in everyday life. The testimonials will particularly emphasize the benefits of visiting spiritual centers. And yes, we will not end there. We have other topics to cover that I'm sure will be of interest to you. For example, we will talk about love and sexuality, reincarnation, the four sacred sciences, geometry, expressing co-creation through the arts, and much, much more. Thank you for watching another episode of Towards a Solar Civilization, the teaching of Ombra Mikhail Ivanhoff. I am your host, Naika, and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Peace.